Shelley Winters is an amazing actress who has been everywhere. She's met almost everybody and done almost everything in our business. She has earned the Oscars for her work in A Patch of Blue and The Diary of Anne Frank. She has written two best-selling books. The third is on the way. And I suspect you'll have a few surprises up her sleeve tonight. Shelley, thanks for coming on and welcome to CBS. Thank you, Tom. I heard this morning that you had the flu, that you might not come in tonight, that you weren't fe feeling too well. And I was very disappointed. And I appreciate your being here and I hope you're feeling okay. I'm feeling all right. A little chilly. It's cold in this studio. No, it's cold in Chicago, Shelby. Oh, all right. <laughs> we know it's cold in Chicago. You have lost, since I saw you the last time here in 1996, a couple of years back, you've lost a person. You've lost a great deal of weight. 50 pounds. Wow. Yeah, well, I, I don't recommend the way I did it. It took me 20 years to lose the weight that I gained for Poseidon. Excuse me for mentioning it was Titanic around. But it took, the director wanted me to gain the weight, and I did it. I would never do it again. And it took me 20 years. And last year, I suddenly got disgusted with being overweight. And I was very depressed, which sort of helped my appetite. I disappeared, and I lost 50 pounds in about three, four months. And while you were losing this weight, what kind of diet were you on, and were you under any kind of medical supervision, yes, doctor's care? I was, but I ate vegetables and drank juice. More or less what the doctor told me to do, but I more or less lost my appetite. And you feel great? You have a lot more pep? You have a lot more energy now? Yeah, I, I didn't feel great right after I lost the weight. I don't recommend that. I think you have to do it with a doctor. Well, you lost it in three months' time, 50 pounds. Usually, yeah. I've, I've done that once in my life, dropped 50 over like eight months to a year. So three months is, is, is pretty it's fast. Too, it's too quick. And your motivation was you just got depressed, huh? You got, yeah, you got tired, of, you're about tired about being heavy. Yeah. Now, tell me then about when you made the Poseidon Adventure, they wanted you to gain how much weight? And, and wh 50 why, pounds. Well, why, I have no why, idea. Why would you have to gain 50 pounds? Why couldn't you have almost drowned at, at, at the weight that you were? Well, I think the director had images of the white whale or something like that. <laughs> I have no idea why. I never found out why. He just wanted me to gain it, and I would go to Chasen's and Romanoff's and sign uh, 20th Century Fox and have dinner and charge it. You mean you got 20th. fat on the expense account? Yes, I did. <laughs> I have to admit it. And now, when you were doing Poseidon Adventure, I remember that picture. That's where the boat is tipped upside down. Mm -hmm. Well, and not quite. Yes, you're right. Just does, go with me does, on that. Yeah, you're right, yeah. now that I think about it. Well, I've done 150 films. I so. know, I know. And then you all have to make your way from the top of the boat to the bottom of the boat, which is now where the, where, where the air is. That's right. And you did a lot of underwater swimming. Well, yeah, how, how that much? was me. I didn't use a double. I'm a good swimmer. So did you have to be coached at all? Oh, I had to uh, be taught uh, scuba diving because we would use uh, air tanks till we got in position, and then they would take them away. And how long did it take to make that picture? About six months. I think I worked four or five. With Gene Hackman, I remember, was in that picture yeah. with you. Ernest Borgnine, Stella Stevens, um, some other people. Yeah. Don't compare that one to the Titanic, because uh, on the, t the Titanic was a little different, as you know. Have you, have you seen I that? I haven't seen it yet. I'm being true to Poseidon. Good. Uh, on no, the, I'll see it. On the Titanic, there's, there's, not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of swimming. And there's not a lot of uh, people who survive. True. Uh, you also gained weight for the Diary of Anne Frank. Have you been keeping track of my weight things for No, films? but, I, but I'll tell you that? what I have been keeping track of. That picture was directed, if my memory's right, by George Stevens. Yes. And I read this afternoon that he said to you, take this part and gain the weight to become heavier mm -hmm. because it will establish you as an actress who can play mature parts and it, it, will, it, will, it, it will make your career last a much longer That's time. That's true. He, he, I was 34, I think. And he said, if you do this part, play a woman 50, you will act for the rest of your life. And he was right. I made the leap from leading lady to character parts, and I still go back and forth. But it wasn't, it, that wasn't, I think I gained about 25 pounds for that, and it wasn't so difficult. And we lost weight during the shooting of the film. That film took about six months. Mm -hmm. As food got scarce, and uh, I sound like, all my films are weight <laughs> problems. <laughs> hardly, hardly. I think those were the only two, if my memory's correct. Uh, and what, what kind of parts do you get offered now? Uh, older ladies, interesting roles. There's one that I'm supposed to do in May called Martel Coils, which is an interesting film. And uh, I've just read to 
one called Gideon's Way, I think, and um, another one, kind of a strange, wacky lady. I don't know whether I'm going to do it. I have to read it again carefully. Most films now seem to have special effects or some kind of devastation. Most of your work uh, that we know of has been in big screen form, theatrical yes. release of films. Now, you worked for a time with Roseanne on mm -hmm. her show in which you played, I believe, her grandmother. Yes. What is it like to come from making big screen to small screen sitcom? It, it's the difference between vaudeville and films. It's quite different. There's nothing like sitcoms. It's not like um, film. It's not even like serious TV. It's another set of muscles and uh, the, the audience has, um, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this, not such a long attention span for these. They're only 24 to 26 well, what, what I was thinking is if, if you're doing a feature of two hours, your character has two hours to pull the audience and the audience gets to know the character and can go for or against it. Here you've got, as you say, 24 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's like a one-act play each yeah. sitcom. And so how did, you, how did you learn to adapt yourself to the short form? Well... I mean, was Roseanne helpful? Could she teach you or give you any tricks of the trade? Well, she was. She understands it very well. And uh, there's a kind of thing of setting up a laugh and then getting the laugh. Sometimes two people do it, you know, the straight line and right, then the comedy. Right. And she was very helpful. She really was that show. She wrote it. She helped write it. She produced it. She cast it. And it went on for, I don't know, eight, nine years. Oh, sure, I mean. sure. It had a very successful run. Yeah. You know, people read it. It would have gone on, but everybody got too old and was leaving for other things. The children all were disappearing. You know, people read of Roseanne. Uh, you know, she had a pretty good run in the tabloid press about her personal life, which is a little bit extravagant, okay, and unusual. What is she like when she's at work? She's not like that at all. She has definite ideas, and she can uh, be angry if something doesn't go well. Uh, but she's very businesslike, and she understands uh, the medium and the laughs and how it's constructed very well. And you and she had no arguments whatsoever? Yeah, we had arguments. but they what? were they, Oh, uh, I would eat in the middle of a scene. I like to eat. And she said, you get it all over your face. She related to me as if I was her real grandmother. I gather that her relations with her mother weren't too well, but with her grandmother, very good. And uh, I had a lot of fun on the show. See, I get the feeling, having read your books, because you tell all, I mean, you're, you're very candid when the first two books you've written, I don't know what's coming out in your third <laughs> book. So I keep, I, I get the feeling like you're kind of, kind of holding back on me here a little bit about Roseanne. No, I'm telling you the truth. I know she has what I call the inquirerizing of America. I feel sorry for the young kids nowadays who are up against, against you know, they have no private life at all. And uh, everything they do is magnified in the tabloids. And uh, I never saw that side of her. She would be angry if something was wrong, mm -hmm. but she was very considerate and very, and she was fun. She was fun to work with. I'm sorry that the show no, is over. That, that's okay. That's okay. I, I just can't wait to read what you write about this experience in the book <laughs> and how much different it will be from what you've done here tonight. We will continue with uh, Dear Shelley Winters and you on the toll-free after this break. With Shelley Winters, here's Mike on the toll-free in Cameron, Texas. Hi, Mike, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hello. Mike, you're on the air. Uh, other replacement show. Shelley... What's your wait, wait, Mike, 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 go, Mike, go back, because we didn't hear what you said to start. We didn't have the phone turned on. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I was just telling you I was glad to have you back. Oh, thank you. And not uh, going to make any disparaging comments about the replacement show. Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Shelley, what's your favorite movie you did? A Place in the Sun. It was one of my early films with George Stevens, Montgomery Cliff, and Elizabeth Taylor. And... Despite the fact that I've done 150 films or more, that is my favorite film. You've said a couple of times, I've done 150 films. Are you proud of that, or is that a weight for you? Oh, or I don't hard, know. Or hard for you given, to believe, my God, I've done 150 films. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I've, given the way you worked under contract, I think I did 35 or 36 
films in seven years. I was under contract to Universal from 48 to 55. And I guess that's what you did. I would be doing costumes for one film when I was making another one so that I could go right into the next film. Well, you did it very well, young lady. Thank you very much. Can I, can I ask you what was the least favorite one that you worked on? Oh, there's several of those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I get nauseous when I, I'm around horses. I think I did about five or ten uh, uh, westerns. And they were not your favorite? No, they weren't. They oh. were difficult. Yeah. And Mike, if you were going to make any comments about the replacement program, what would the comment be? Well, the world is round. I mean, that 12 hours is kind of built into the solar system. Uh, weather is weather. And, uh, they're upwind of El Nino, but they can blame that. There should have been more planning for filler time, I guess. Well, it's tough to plan filler, Mike. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad well, they, you called. They should have let me call. I beg your pardon? <laughs> they could have let me call. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, all righty. Anyway, Mike, I'm glad you called, and thanks for watching tonight. Good night now. All right, good night now. You know, you touched on something when you talked about the tremendous amount of media focus there is on young actors today. Mm -hmm. uh, the tabloids, uh, both the television and print, uh, the various talk shows, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, paparazzi. How much tougher do you think it is for a young actor starting out today than it would, was when you were starting out? Oh, I think it's much tougher. I think the rewards are more. They get enormous amounts of money when they make it. Sure. But I think the training and the protection that studios gave you. You were under contract, you had a publicity man, you had teachers, uh, coaches, um, and I think there, uh, there's a kind of, I think they have to pay for publicity men, bodyguards, and they have to constantly be on guard against bad publicity. Except that now, bad publicity doesn't seem to hurt stars. <laughs> I mean, any number of stars that are household names have been caught in various peccadillos by the press, uh, have been photographed. I mean, there's a videotape of two very popular people going around with very explicit sex, which in your day probably would have ended, ended the career if people were caught in that sort of thing. Well, you don't know whether those people are going to have a career of any decent kind after this. I think there's a low threshold in the public for bad publicity. I think they take it for a little while and then I think they just lose interest in the star or the performer. And I think there's a certain responsibility if you're a public figure. Now like when you were a young actress in Hollywood, were you told things that were acceptable and not acceptable and did you have a morals clause in your contract? Yes, and, and, all... and, and what were the no-no's? What, what would have gotten you in big trouble if you'd, if you'd have done it back then? I think I did all those things. <laughs> yeah. If you read any of my books, uh, no, you were, you were respectable as you could be, and if you uh, did anything that was reprehensible, you tried to cover it up or let the studio take care of it or fix it some way. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think there's a, a morals clause in films nowadays, and there used to be one, what you could do in films and what you couldn't. There was the uh, Catholic Legion of Decency. Right. And I don't think that's effective anymore. And what was the Hayes office where yeah, the Hayes had office. twin beds, and if the man and woman if were on the bed... man and woman married, they had twin beds. Right, and if they sat on the same bed, one, each one had the foot on the floor. Yes, when I did yeah. The Double Life with Ronald Coleman, when he strangled me, he had, you had to see his feet on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you killed some of your co-stars, didn't you? Uh, I can't remember them. I remember being killed myself in several pictures, but I don't remember the ones. I think I killed uh, as a gangster picture, and I shot uh, somebody. I don't remember. And how big a force was Confidential Magazine when you were a younger actor? It wasn't a very big magazine. It, uh, was the closest thing to the Inquirer. Tabloid, right. Tabloid. Um, I think I found out about one of my divorces in Confidential. Here's Scott on the toll-free in Welland, Ontario. Hello. Hello, Tom. Great to have you back. Thank you, Scott. It's nice to be back. Hello, Shelley. Hello. Who was your all-time favorite leading man? Montgomery Cliff. Really? Yes. And Ronald Coleman. Why is that? 
Well, he had a, a presence, Ronald Coleman, and a dignity and a gentlemanliness that I think they've thrown away the pattern for that. I don't know any actors who have it anymore. And Montgomery Cliff had a depth and sweetness and kind of, uh, it's very hard for me to name it, but it's a kind of sadness that he had that was very powerful on the screen. What about women co-stars, female co-stars? Who were your favorites to work with? Oh dear, Elizabeth Taylor right. in A Place sun. in the Sun. Um, I didn't have many female co-stars. I was a star. <laughs> <laughs> well, shut my mouth. Scott, I'm glad you called. Anything else, sir? No, Miss Winters, you're a legend. Keep on going strong, please. Thank you very much. Good night, Tom. Good night, Scott. And good night for NBC News. <laughs> <laughs> now, this new book, this is the third book. How far along are we on this particular project? Well, I have outlines, lots of outlines. Got all, the page, all the page numbers are done, right? Yes, and uh, the s stories I want to tell, but I can't seem to get myself in the chair that I can write the stories. It's, I have to block out a, a hunk of time where I'm dedicated and concentrated and then it'll go that's what my experience with the other two books well, but get, i haven't quite done that well yet. get it done get yes it sir done. we will continue with uh, shelly winters and you on the toll free as time permits after this short time out <laughs> with shelly winters judy on the toll free in linden new jersey hi judy you're on the air hi hi I would, tom snyder i absolutely love you thank you ma'am I have a question for Miss Winters. Sure. I would like to know, is she dating anyone now, and will she ever get married again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think three strikes, you're out. I've been married three times, and I'm not dating anyone right now. But do you consider them strikes, or, or, or do you have happy memories of each of your marriages? Oh, I do. I have very happy mar uh, memories. I was married to a navigator during the Second World War, and we wrote to each other every day for four years. And then we didn't recognize each other at the train station. Um, the second marriage was Vittorio Gassman. Mm -hmm. Did you ask me this? I guess you did. Uh, and he lived in Italy, and we got married not discussing where we were going to live. And he expected me to live in Italy, and I expected him to live in Hollywood. That could be a problem. And the third marriage, well, it's better not to talk okay. about it. Okay, okay. Be generous, okay. <laughs> Wonderful love story. Thank you. Judy, thanks for calling and thanks for watching. Thank you, Tom. Bye now. Good night, Miss Winters. It's nice they call you Miss Winters, huh? I love that and I I think I've reached an age where I can be Miss Winters. I think so too. But do your friends ever call you Shirley? Because that's your real yeah. name. Yes, yes. I, I think I was probably named after Shirley Temple. But I changed it in a very funny way. I was in an office at the group theater. And somebody said, well, what, what's a more dignified name? And I said, well, Shelley, the poet, is my favorite poet. They wrote down Shelley. And then they said, I said, my mother's maiden name was Winter. And Shelley Winter, she wrote down and sent it in. And then for some reason, Universal made me plural, added an S. I never found out why to this day. But Shirley, what was your last name? Shrift. What would be wrong with that, Shirley Shrift? That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I've thought about writing under that name. And I might, but I think after 50 years in movies, oh, I don't yeah, it's think too I late can, now. it's too, too late, late now yeah. to try to change You know, I saw a documentary, oh, years ago, it was called The Making of Gone with the Wind. And they showed the screen tests of the actresses who, who, who wanted to be Scarlett O'Hara. You were one of those, were you not? Well, not quite. No. I, George Cukor interviewed me, and I had a rather New York accent. And I said, Mr. Cukor, I'm the only girl to play Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> and after intensive speech work, I did double life for him. Have you ever wanted a part that you didn't get? Oh, yes. That you wished you would have had? Would yes. you tell me now some parts that other actresses may have done that you really you coveted and, 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 and lusted for but didn't get? Driving Miss Daisy. No, oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And she was magnificent in it. And there are other things. You know, it's hard to go back and remember your defeats. It's better to remember your victories. 
So there were quite a few. I've had a long career in a lot of films. And there are some that I wanted to do very badly and didn't do. Mm -hmm. But then look at the ones that you got to do. That's true. You know, that others may have lusted for as well. And, and, and don't you think that victories and defeats have a way of... Evening out. ...balancing as, <laughs> yes. as, as we go along here? Uh, you have memories of Howard Hughes, I'm told. You, you went out with him a couple of times. Never had a fling or anything, no. but, you, but you went out yes. with Howard. I met him at a New Year's Eve party at Sam Spiegel's house. He was very tall, and I assumed that he was a uh, art director because he wore sneakers with a kind of rusty tuxedo. And uh, we got to talking. I was sort of a wallflower. I didn't have a very expensive evening gown on. And uh, in fact, he picked me up at my house, and I was living with my mother and father. And uh, my he had uh, leather... Uh, Elbows Patches and rather a, a, a shoddy kind of jacket. And my father, who was working in the garment district in Los Angeles, suggested that he come down to his place and he would get him a couple of jackets wholesale. He sent somebody down to get him. <laughs> yeah, well, he was cheap, you know. He, was... <laughs> he didn't go, but he sent, I think, Meyer yeah. down to my father's factory to get a couple of jackets. Was he fun to be around at all? Yes, he was. He was very bright and he was fun. So are you. Finish the book, okay? And keep going, and thanks for gracing our stage tonight, Ms. Winters. Thank you for having me here, My Tom. great pleasure, and feel well. Shelley Winters Thank is you. the guest. Uh, she's done so many wonderful pictures, and hopefully she'll do many, many more. Next, William Bratton and uh, Turnaround, What Made New York a Safer Place uh, in Which to Live and in Which to Visit as well. Well, you, you wouldn't in which to visit, just to visit. <laughs> in which to visit. Bye-bye. <laughs>